guys and welcome to Movie Emporium's TV review of the first season of Crossing Swords, uh, which is created by John Habertine IV and Tom Root, who worked on Robot Chicken as executive producers. Uh, before we begin, please hit that subscribe button to join Movie Emporium, hit that notification bell at the top to find what's coming next, and uh, comment below on any video that you watch, including this one. So Hulu has been on kind of a weird, interesting roll the last few years. Uh, they've been creating content that is of HBO level of absurdity and violent and nudity and risque and just not for kids um, this show crossing swords is uh it's straight up the robot chicken alley which is where these two producers came from um okay so the story is before i get into how crazy this show is um it's about a squire or a guy who ends up becoming a squire named patrick and patrick is a good natured sweethearted guy who's more of a simpleton he really is there and focused to be as good as he can be to the king to the people in this kingdom he's looked down upon of his family who were a pirate a clown and a rogue uh, robin hood style character and he is just someone who wants to do good by everyone but he's so conflicted about how he is going to do this he has a friend who's named broth who's that crazy and wild guy he's like all those 80s style you know sidekick characters that are a lot of fun uh to watch and just do crazy things but patrick does what he can to protect his kingdom even though he's not the perfect squire and you know if a squire is one of those people that protects the king protects you know the family and protects the kingdom that he's uh, ruling that he's under rule of and so it's a it's a story you've seen a billion times before the person who is the, the most down looked upon who rises up in the ranks of becoming the bigger you know he hero and so on and so forth but with that said and who is basically created this series and what they worked on this series is as irreverent and crass and rude and crude and violent and risque and gross and everything you can imagine from the people from robot chicken doing this is the type of show they would do this show is bonkers i, I don't know any other ways to say about it this show is insane to the 10th degree uh there's a reason people don't like this show that it's getting terrible reviews because this is a show for juvenile potheads juvenile drunks kids and young adults and people that really like that robot chicken or aqua teen hunger force or any of these shows that you literally have to be smoking tons of weed just to understand even what's going on and get the jokes and laugh at them because there is some insane stuff in this I, there's stuff in this show that like borderlines almost offensive and borderlines almost disgusting actually i think it actually goes to in disgusting roots there's stuff that i was cringing at that i was like laughing out of just pure like awe inspiring of how crazy it was I flinched a couple times. I was grossed out many times. There's a uh, episode six of this um, of the show deals with like womanhood and deals with circumcision and deals with an ice sculpture that is very very disturbing. There's love romances that are just going on borderline bestiality. There is just crazy stuff going on. I mean, like this show goes for broke and it does it in a very in your face way and if you can't handle that then there's no point in watching the show because it's not for you this is what justin roiland would do on a uh, binge night this is like this is like rick and morty times a hundred but maybe just not as funny but the cast in this show is incredible uh patrick is played by nicholas holt Nicholas Holt is an amazing actor, and he's coming to his own as an amazing actor. I talked about him in uh, Mad Max Fury Road, but you don't even recognize him as Nicholas Holt because one, he's lo he's lost his accent, so he's not you know he's doing an American accent. He's doing that wimpy guy character motif, and he doesn't really feel like Nicholas Holt. He's kind of enveloped himself into this character, and I just love him for that. I love Nicholas Holt is just an amazing actor. That's all I can say, and it just really shows his character motivations his character arcs but he still holds his own and nicholas holt just plays that character really well and he's a tr like one of the true standouts in this series but he has such a insane group of cast around him i've already talked about broth who's played by adam halley who the begin he's like he does what you think these guys would do what those 80s like people these 80s psychics would do he does like 
contest and he does like takes his clothes off he's naked and he does like oh my god there's so much disgusting stuff that this guy does and it's just like what you expect from a character that's a psychic but somehow they're friends somehow patrick who's like the most level-headed character is having to live with people that are like broth you know his brothers and sisters who are played by tara strong tony hale and adam ray who like i said tara strong has done stuff like harley quinn she you know in uh fairly odd parents uh she plays uh coral who is a pirate that pill rapes and pillages uh tony hale who is an amazing actor he's the only one that i think is actually recognizable from his voice he plays the clown who looks like uh, marceau marceau and he's like a down in the dumps clown, but he pillages and like steals stuff. And then you have Adam Ray, who plays Ruben, who is an amazing looking, uh, like Robin Hood style character who just like takes from the poor and just doesn't, or takes from the rich, but doesn't give back to the poor type of guy. And then there's like a, a plot of his character that just doesn't make, it goes into like territory that might offend a lot of people because of the day and date and nature of what we live in today. And, his mother and father, who are played by Breck and Meyer and Wendy McClovin Covey, are like a sexually charged couple. They're just all, like every time you see them, they're like wanting to have sex with one another. And there's a really funny joke where they go to a lodge and it's really good stuff. And they look down upon Patrick. It's like Patrick's just this guy that just doesn't get any luck and there's this character played by Jamila Jamel who was in The Good Place who plays Sloan who he becomes attracted to and she has a very interesting arc to her character but it's just fun to see Patrick try to deal with that situation and so we have the king and queen in the show who are played by Luke Evans and uh, Alana Ubeck uh, Luke Evans as uh, King Merriman is fantastic and his you know how he acts and interacts with his, his his like people and his you know underlings and stuff like that he's a terrible king uh he put his father who is played by rob cordry who plays the old king into a self-isolated you know place and rob cordry is just amazing as just like out of his mind he has like puppets and stuff like that it's it's pretty amazing and alana ubak as queen tulip queen tulip is an amazingly sexually charged character it's insane to watch her play this character because she is off her nut a lot of times but her character has some like the greatest moments there's a episode where she goes on like a like, almost like a stag party or something like that and she's really bored because there's no alcohol and so she devises a plan with another character and just to see her kind of you know take on these different characters in this episode we know as we're watching this show where uh, Princess Blossom gets her craziness from because Queen Tulip is just as awesome as she is. She's just like a very insane character, but it's just it's so much fun to watch. So like everybody in the show is amazing. It's just the stuff that uh, these producers are making these guys say and talk and feel. It's just it's incredible. I mean, Yvette Nicole Brown, who is the basically controlling the squire, she's like the sergeant in control. Um, Yvette Nicole Brown has always been fantastic. You look at community and stuff like that. She's just a, a well rounded actress that does very good stuff with you know her comedic timing and she's just so much fun here she looks like somebody you like take down anybody and so on and so forth seth green plays blinker quartz which is the wizard of the castle who really doesn't do any magic he's like he's like what you would imagine merlin would be in real life who he has all this mysticism around him and these books and stuff written about him but he you know he was just a conjuring of old tricks he wasn't doing the stuff that you think about and the see uh seth green who is well known for robot chicken creating that series and you know what he's so in austin powers and the italian job and you know idle hands he he has a great prowess like brecken meyer and like matt santrich who they have a way of just creating great characters and i think the castle wizard is just great because he does all this stupid stuff and like when the when there's a big set piece and big set action piece at the end of the, of the season he like he has like wants nothing to do with it and just to see how his character plays out and so on and so forth it's pretty pretty funny so there's a character named princess blossom who's played by uh, maya erskine and she's like the most spoiled most like dem she demeans all the people she knows she's just a very mean person 
and some reason Patrick keeps trying to save her because she's a princess and she's a girl that you go after to save but just a level of ineptness to her and a level of just angriness to her just a level of I don't care who you are I don't want to have to deal with you the fact that her love interest who is this very attractive looking person who was in a band is killed in the middle of the show and becomes a ghost and she wants to have relationships with the ghost is incredible I, I there's not much else i can say about it it's really really funny to watch when you know everything that she is about is just the level of insanity of her character she's the most insane character in the show outside of um I don't know, <laughs> the wizard maybe. I, there's, the characters are this insane. Broth is really insane. And Natasha Leone pops up in the show and is really, really funny. You can tell it's Natasha Leone. For some reason, Alfred Molina, you know, the guy who played Doc Ock and was in Shock a lot and was in Raiders of the Lost Ark, pops up in the show as Robin Hood. And uh, it's, it's a sight to behold. But uh, yeah, this show, oh my God. It's a... Uh, <sighs> Um, yeah, it's a show that has insane stuff in it. I, I, I don't know what else to say. Um, like I said, episode six, episode one, episode five, which is about the, um, uh, about, uh, Blarney and him being chased after, and, and there's a party, a stag party, and there's some other thing party, and there's a erotic hypnotist, and, uh, I, I don't want to give away. I, I, I don't know how much I can give away. Episode 6 is probably the most messed up episode in this entire series. Uh, at least for the time being. Just because of the stuff they're presenting um, in this series. It's... I don't know what else I can say about it. But, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> full frontal nudity, sex, violence. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, the animation is really good, though. Uh, they use peg people. Um, and what's really nice is they look everything in this world looks like a child's playset, and all the characters are wooden. The paint on the characters are actually they don't look like they're finished painted on, which gives it a really nice aesthetic. From you know when you had like toys like that you paint with and stuff like that, it never looks fully complete. It never looks fully well done. I like the fact that. These characters actually wear clothes, but it's just painted on clothes, but somehow they're able to remove the paint that is considered the clothes. And when you see like the full frontal nudity or the violence, you know, the clothes actually peel off. For instance, like if somebody has a six pack and like a you know, well toned chest, like it's painted on there, the, you know, six pack. Um, when they show the women's boobs and stuff like that, it's uh, a sight to behold, I'll tell you that much. But uh, yeah, it's uh, the animation's quite incredible it looks like like i said it looks like something that if a child was very of a uh weird mindset could create and it shows that it is made of a series like robot chicken the people at robot chicken have had a lot of experience creating shows out of inanimate objects out of toys and stuff like that um my favorite part about this show is the fire and the water because it's like um cotton so when the fire is burning like it's just cotton pieces and stuff like that popping out so it's like really crappily done but for instance like uh one of the characters there's a dragon in this and the dragon is made out of like you know like wood pieces and stuff like that and it burns alive one of the characters in the, like the first episode or something like that and the character is covered with this with, with this like um this claw or this uh cotton and all of a sudden he's just like skeleton it's, it's pretty amazing but it's stuff like that the characters there's characters in this like a uh, minotaur that just go not exactly what you expect but uh yeah the series is just it's interesting it really is it's a fun series if you are in the mood for it but if you can't handle the real crass crass humor the you know, humor that goes way past the bounds of uh, what is accepted in TV nowadays. Um, this is not a show for you. It really isn't. It's a show for people that can handle the grossness, that can handle the sickness, that can handle the crass humor. And uh, I, I kind of like it. I really do. I'm a huge fan of Robot Chicken. I'm a huge fan of Aqua Teen Hunger Force. I'm a huge fan of Mr. Pickles. I'm a huge fan of these shows that just go way above, you know, the edge. And uh, if you like Rick and Morty, 
you may still not like the show because this goes way past Rick and Morty. This is, you know, like a drug trip in the Twilight Zone of some sort. But, yeah, that's uh, pretty much my take on uh, Crossing Swords. Uh, the title itself should give you an idea that this show is uh, definitely not for kids. So, um, but that'll do it. That'll be my take on the first season of Crossing Swords. I was trying to not give you as much information on the show in case you wanted to watch it, not spoil as much. But it's a show that has to has to be seen. So there you go. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, that'll do it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you've watched this series, let me know in the comments below what you think of it. What was your favorite episode? Don't spoil anything, but let me know what your favorite episode was. Uh, like I said, um, episode six, definitely a uh, winner of the season. So uh, anyways, uh, subscribe to the channel that is Movie Emporium. Also, like and dislike this video, depending on what you think. If you like it, hit the like. If you dislike it, hit the dislike, whatever. Also, hit the notification bell at the top to find out what's coming next. And uh, that's it. We'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out. What's up, guys? Thank you so much for checking out Movie Emporium. I really appreciate it. If you want to, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification button and the bell at the top. Find out what's coming next for Movie Emporium. Also, check out these two videos. They're amazing. I think they're awesome. I think you'll enjoy them too. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.